will be taking up the composition of population, which is another very important aspect of population. Now the question is, what do we mean by the composition of population? So composition refers to physical, socio, cultural and economic attributes of population. Now what are these attributes? Under these we include the age, sex, place of residence, language, religion, marital status, literacy or you can say the education and the occupation. Now first we take up the rural urban composition. On the basis of the place of residence, the population is divided into two parts, rural and urban composition of the population. Now what is rural population? The population living in villages is known as rural population. And the population living in the towns and cities is known as urban population. Look at the screens children and you can view a table showing the population of India under two subheads rural and urban population for the two different census years 2001 and 2011. And there is a column also indicating the difference in the population in these years. In 2001, the difference in the rural and uh, rural population was 9 and the urban population difference was only 9.1. So this was for the first time after independence that the absolute increase in population is more in the urban areas than in the rural areas. The rural population of India according to 2011 census is 68.8. 84% and whereas the urban population is only 31.16%. Now rural and urban population differ from each other in under three heads. One is the way of life. Number two, the educational structure and the occupational structure of the people. And of course, the attitudes of the people also makes a difference between the rural and urban population. Now who are the rural folks who are very simple and their social relations are quite close and deep. They derive their livelihood from primary activities because this is the type of activity which only prevails in the villages. Whereas the urban folks they get adjusted to the urban life where pace of life is fast and the social relations are very, very formal. They derive their livelihood from secondary or the tertiary activities because these two types of activities are common in the towns and the cities. Now rural population in India is primarily because India is a primarily a country of villages, so the three-fourth of the population lives in villages. And according to 2011 census, as I've told earlier also, that 68% is a rural population, whereas only 31% is the urban population. The national average of the rural and the urban population presents only the overall picture. And there are great regional variations in the percentage of the rural population to the total population. According to 2001 census, Himachal Pradesh has the highest percentage of the rural population, whereas 90.21% of the population lives in the rural areas. And if we just compare the Himachal Pradesh with the capital city of Delhi, the minimum of only 7% of the population is the rural population. The growth rate of the rural population is declining for the last several decades and there are certain important reasons for that. One, the large mortality rate and number two, increase in the rural to urban migration is an important factor which is responsible for the rise in the urban population. 
Now, what is urbanization, children? It's a process of society's transformation from the predominantly rural to predominantly urban population is known as urbanization. Urbanization includes two things. One, increase in the number of people living in the urban settlements. And number two, increase in the percentage of population engaged in, mind children, this is non-agricultural activities. So when we talk about non-agricultural activities, so that means we di discuss about the secondary or the tertiary or quaternary or queenary activities of the people. Now there are certain regional variations in the urbanization. Goa is the most urbanized state with 49.77% of the population living in the urban areas. And among the larger states, Tamil Nadu with 43.86% population, Maharashtra 42.40%, Gujarat 37.35%, Karnataka 33.98%, and Punjab 33.95% population is the urban population. Now, second composition of population we take up, that is the linguistic composition. Now, language is very important indicator of the ethnic identity. It's very important integrating force in the society. The inhabitants of India came from the different parts of the world and brought the different languages to India. And language became very important basis for the formation of the states in India after independence. Now, look at the screens and you can have a view of the scheduled languages according to 1991 census. There are 18 languages which are scheduled in the eighth schedule of the constitution. And here one column is made indicating the percentage of the speaking population for those languages. As on the table you can see the highest speaking population is the Hindi speaking people with 40 percent of the total population. And the minimum is the Sanskrit that is only 0.01 percent of the population goes for this language. So the 18 languages, I'll just read out the names and you can just view on the screens also, Hindi, Bengali, Telugu, Marathi, Tamil, Urdu, Gujarati, Kannada, Malayalam, Uriya, Punjabi, Asmis, Sindhi, Nepali, Konkani, Manipuri, Kashmiri, and Sanskrit. So according to these languages, there are four families for the different types of the languages. One language family is known as the Austric family, which only constitutes 1.38 percent of the population. Second is the Dravians, that is 20 percent of the population. Then we have the sino tibetan family, which constitutes only 0.85 percent of the total population and the largest population comes under the Indo-European family and that is the Aryan linguistic family which constitutes 73 percent of the total population. Now the third composition of the population is the religious composition. Religion is very important social cultural attribute of the population of India. Religion plays a crucial role in the socio-cultural life of the people. India is the birthplace of four major religions, Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, and Sikhism. Now look at the screens, children. Here is the percentage of population under these various religious groups of the country. There is a comparative table showing one year that is 1961 and the second for 2011. 
Hindus, according to 1961 census, the population was 83.5 percent, and there is a very alarming situation, children, that there is a decline in the population of the Hindus as per 2011 census, which has come down to 80.5 percent. And the population which is gearing up, that is the population of the Muslims, which was only 10.7 percent in 1961, which has come up to 12.1 percent. And the others also you can see Christians 2.3, followed by six 1.9, Buddhists 0.8 percent, Jains 0.4 percent and the others constitute 0.6 percent of the total population of India. Now first we take up Hindus. According to 2011, Hinduism accounts for the largest part of the India's population. As we have already seen in the table, it is 80.5 percent of the total population. And this population of the Hindus constitutes 12 percent of the world's population. And the majority of the Hindu population is found in the state of Himachal Pradesh, where 95.4 percent population is of Hindus, and the lowest in one of the northeastern states, that is Mizoram children, and that is 3.6 percent only. Now, if we take up the Muslim population, this is the second largest religious group, which again constitutes the 12 percent of the country's population, with a total population of 138 million. Proportion of the Muslim population to the total population ranges from 1.1 percent in Mizoram to 67 percent in Jammu and Kashmir, and 95 percent in Lakshadweep. Now, here is a table and look at the screens. This is for the Christians. The Christian population had been increasing in the two years, that is 1951 to 71, but again there is a sudden fall in the percentage of a population, which has come down from 2.4 percent in 1981 to 2.3 percent in 2001. 6, 19.2 million 6 according to 2011 census figures amount 1.9 percent of the total population. And of course, Punjab is the state with the highest percentage of the 6 population and that is around 60 percent of the total population is of the 6. Buddhists, 7.95 millions of the population is of the Buddhists in India. And Jains, they have 4.2 millions of the population in the country. Now, the last composition of the population is based on the composition of working population is based on the productive work. And according to that productive work, the population of India is divided into three groups, main workers, marginal workers and non-workers. Now, what are the main workers? They are the one who work economically gainful work for a period of 183 days in a year. They are known as the main workers, marginal workers. These workers who put less than 183 days in a year, they are known as marginal workers. And the third category of the workers is non-workers. So, non-workers are the one who do not work for the earning their livelihood at any time during the year, they are known as the non-workers. Now, next is the participation rate. The proportion of workers in a population is expressed by the rate called the participation rate. Proportion of workers, that is the main workers, plus marginal workers in the total population is known as the participation rates. Main workers constitute 30.4 percent, marginal workers 8.7 percent 
and non-workers they are 60.9 percent of the total population. So children you have just seen the composition of the population under the various heads. Rural urban composition, religious composition, working non-working population and the composition of the population on the different languages we speak. So with this we end up with the chapter where we have covered the distribution, density, growth and the composition of population. Thank you.